morning everybody how's everybody doing uh, it's Casey again taking over for Pete today uh, you're potentially gonna miss out on a little bit of snow moving content today it's always harder to tell on video but we got a little bit of a ground blizzard uh, yesterday was uh, 50 60 degrees outside and now my uh, my vehicle says two degrees so we're right around zero, the wind's blowing really hard, but today is gonna be a cheese curd making day. So I have the milk uh, holding temp at 145 degrees for pasteurization. And when I get back into the yard, I'll probably throw the camera on so you can see the snow again, and then uh, I'll start cooling that milk. Thanks for watching. We've been experiencing a lot of really unseasonably warm weather. Um, we actually were open in the cafe the end of January and it was 45 degrees outside and we had people sitting outside but uh, mother nature has now reminded us that it is in fact still winter in North Dakota so our yard went from grass that was starting to turn green to looking like it's Christmas at the creamery again here all right we're inside the creamery now here where I've been holding our, our uh, vat for about 30 minutes, uh, just over 145 here, and we've got our chart recorder. Uh, so that will sh that's kind of our legal record. Uh, if you remember from other, some of our other videos, that's our legal record that shows that we in fact did pasteurize this. Um, we do have to pasteurize cheese curds as they're not an aged cheese. Um, so with the Gouda, we don't have to uh, have it at 145 for 30 minutes we just do uh, 147 for 20 seconds and then since it's aged at least two months we're able to start cooling immediately so I'm draining the jacket now getting the hot water out and we'll start cooling that will take about an hour so I'll start cooling and then I'll head over to the house and check on March and Shep um, Shepard is going to be a big brother here soon. March's due date is uh, March 2nd, so i uh, got to check in on them, see how they're doing, and then we'll keep going with the cheese curd making process. All right, so we got the lids off. Um, lids off and washed, and then we put on the knives. So right now we're in stirring mode, so there's a couple of baffles on the knives here. Now we're looking to be, you know, kind of just under 90 degrees, kind of in that 88 to 89 um, range. And now I'm going to add our culture here. So this is the, the good bacteria. So if you remember from our, our uh, Buddha cheese making video, um, we usually have this vat quite a bit higher. Um, when we make a batch of Gouda, we produce a lot more product at one time. Um, but we like to make the cheese curds um, fresh and consumable right away, so we, we don't really want to have any waste. So today this is a 250 gallon batch. So we're not even, well we're a little over one third of what this vat can hold. Um, I guess in the future, if more people eat our curds, we'll, uh, We'll have to make bigger batches, but we're usually in the two to 300 gallon range. So this will ripen for about a half an hour now, uh, and then it'll be time to add the rennet. It's been ripening for about a half an hour, and now I have my um, rennet, which is an enzyme that will help the milk coagulate. So I'll start adding this now. We'll usually spin for about, or we'll stir for about two minutes uh, fast, or a minute and a half, and then we'll slow it down and we'll reverse it to try to get the milk to a standstill and then that will also sit for about another half an hour. So I bumped the speed up um, just because the rennet is such a small amount, you know, it's less than 50 milliliters uh, in this 250 gallon batch, so I want to make sure that the rennet is evenly dispersed throughout. So we've been mixing for about a minute. Uh, very shortly here I'll reverse um, our 
knives uh, and our baffles and we'll try to get this milk to a standstill. So um, you will find out, you know, we have a cheese making setup for Gouda cheese um, or Gouda uh, for the people that are going to make fun of how I say Gouda. Um, but what we'll end up doing is we'll use our setup for Gouda cheese um, and we'll kind of adapt it to the cheddar cheese curd style of, of uh, production, I should say. So um, after this coagulates for about half an hour, we'll start cutting it and I'll, uh, I'll bring, you back, uh, bring you back to speed. All right, I'm back here. Um, it hasn't quite been the half an hour, but I usually like to um, check the coagulation uh, just in case it coagulates a little faster or slower than anticipated. So I'll check the curd now for a nice clean break. Well, I'm glad I came a couple minutes earlier because it's looking like it's pretty much ready to cut. All right, so I took the, the baffles off, the knives, and I'm going to start uh, cutting the curd here. So I like to cut nice and slow. Um, since these are Gouda cheese knives, uh, I have to change the process a little bit for um, the cheddar, process of uh, cutting the curd. So I'll kind of help things along and then I'll get a paddle out and stir a little bit. So I put the, the baffles, uh, put the baffles back on the cheese knives here. So I'm gonna be done cutting. Um, now a traditional cheddar uh, cheese knife, you would have vertical knives and then you would have horizontal. Um, now since we're set up for Gouda again, I have to kind of get in there with the paddle. Um, but. I think this is going to work out really nicely. I try not to cut the curds too small. So now the next step is we will take this, uh, we'll take these now cut curds um, and we'll have them separate from the whey, give off a little bit more whey. Um, and so we'll heat for about 45 minutes up to about 100 degrees. And then that'll bring us on to the next step. So I'll just be heating off and on here slowly bringing that temperature up for the next 45 minutes all right so we've uh we've been stirring for about 45 minutes and heating and now we're ready to transfer over into our drainage table um so i'll get our our pump going and we'll start bringing that curd over Trying to just get the curds that are pumped over nice and uniform and level. 
Now in a, a traditional cheddar making vat or a cheese uh, making vat, uh, a lot of times you can skip this process because they have nice long rectangular uh, vats. Now we have a circular vat that we're not able to reach the bottom, so we transfer it over into our drainage table. All right, we just had a frantic battery change here, but we got all the curd pumped over into our drainage table. Everything's nice and level. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll essentially begin the cheddaring process. We're draining off our way over here. Uh, and then as this comes down, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take um, uh, our big mass of curds that they used to be individual peas, and now they're going to start knitting together. So that's essentially what the cheddaring process is. So we'll take this, and I like to split it right down the middle. Now again, you know, I don't, pro I don't proclaim to be a, a cheddar making expert, um, but this is how we make our cheese curds. Now if you notice, our curds are white, they're not yellow. So traditionally, um, curds should be white or the color of milk, uh, and the yellow would actually be a, a food coloring. So we don't do that, um, we just kind of like to let our, our cheese speak for itself. So, all right, now that I, I um, cut down the middle here. I'm going to bring this section of curds. And I'm going to bring it up on here So the purpose of doing this is that we can start to get our way to drain, drain down the middle of the table. Okay, so as you can see, what used to be kind of individual pea or bean sized curds, they've started to, to knit together. Okay, that's what we're looking for. So over the next probably about two hours, these individual curds will knit together um, and we'll start to get to the cheddar cheese uh, final product, or for in our case, cheddar cheese curds. So um, I'll take these two big slabs now that are kind of split right down the middle and I'm gonna take a knife and I'll cut them into uh, essentially bread loaf sizes. Uh, and then we'll take those loaves and we'll flip them and we'll stack them uh, until we get to our desired end product. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes, uh, and now I'm getting, we, we flipped it once, and now I'm already going to go into stacking it too high. So I'll cut these slabs in half, and then stack, flip them and stack them. They'll sit for another 15 to 20 minutes again. And I have to show you, here's Marcha. So pregnant with our, we don't know if it's gonna be a boy or a girl. 
And with Shepard, our son, she cleaned the cheese vat at 40 weeks. So, so I think she's trying to get this, uh, get this labor started. So thanks for cleaning the vat. <laughs> All right, time for another flip. Okay, we're going to start doing um, stacking four high now. So we've done a couple of rounds of two high, now we'll go to four. So with time and heat, that good culture um, is continuing to work. Um, we're starting to see what used to be individual curds and then they were loaves. Um, now they're kind of starting to turn into slabs. So that's what we're looking for. Um, we'll continue this process for, for another few turns. Um, and then when we feel like we're ready that we want to start actually hand milling the curds, uh, we'll get that process started. So see you in a little bit. All right, I've got Noemi here with me. We're just trying to decide between doing one more flip or, or maybe two. Um, we kind of look at the amount of weight that comes off and you can also monitor pH. Um, that's a good indicator of when you're ready to go. So we'll give it a flip here and enjoy. You're skinny, huh? I usually try to find the thickest slabs to put on the bottom so they, they get a little bit more pressure than the thin ones. Uh, and we'll start lining things up and then we'll, we'll start milling very shortly. So we've got uh, Connie and Noemi. So Connie, my mother-in-law, Pete's mom, joined us here today. Um, we're gonna get started with the milling process. So we're, we're happy with where our slabs are at. So we're gonna put them into our, our curd mill, um, which it's kind of like, a, uh, it's like a homemade french fry maker.
right, so we milled our curds. Uh, and now as you can see, I've got my wife working really hard here. Um, she is, uh, essentially we're trying to incorporate the salt that we've added evenly throughout the curds. Uh, now if you had a, a big vat that was dedicated to cheddar, you would maybe have a, an agitator that you would put some paddles on and it would, it would go throughout. But we go by hand here. Uh, everything's kind of kind of artisan, so I'm gonna give her a break here. Yeah, that's all. All right, we got our curds nice and mixed up here. We'll start filling some buckets here and uh, start filling the deli containers by hand. Okay, so this is. The final step of the process, we'll fill our, our deli containers and then I'll right away stock up our on-farm store, the milk house store on our farm. Um, and then tomorrow I'm actually going to be uh, stocking up our store in Fargo. So they'll get fresh squeaky cheese curds. Um, we're, we're a little bit short-handed today uh, due to the winter storm. One of our full-time employees wasn't able to make it. They had about 20 miles of, of highway that was do not, or it was no travel advised. Um, and then school was closed, so we're missing out on one or two high schoolers. So we'll be filling these by hand for, for a while yet. So I better, I better put the camera away. Thanks for watching. Hi. Okay, I actually forgot I wanted to show you. So we made some fresh cheese curds in the middle of a winter storm. Um, but, so right now we only make um, fresh cheddar cheese curds with no herbs or spices. Uh, we've been saying for a couple years that we really wanna be able to do that. The one thing that we do do is we will take these um, and we'll hand batter them and then we'll serve them in our cafe. Um, but, if you would like, um, comment, you know, if you have any suggestions or if you're a cheesemaker out there, we'd, you know, we'd love to hear um, how you make cheddar cheese curds. Um, but if you have a special flavor, you know, some people they like jalapeno or dill pickle, ranch, whatever, comment your favorite flavor um, and we'll look into getting that going. So, all right, and we did taste test them. Very good, very fresh, very squeaky. Um, now I do actually have to get back to work. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.